Hello, Etu. Привет. Uh, can you say anything to our um, viewers? Excuse me? Uh, can you say anything to our sub subscribers? Uh, well, what can I say? Uh, it's it's really nice to be here and uh, it's always nice to be interviewed by but uh, even Ukrainian hockey media, it's, it's, it's even better. Yeah, nice to meet you, Ed. So uh, the first question, uh, tell us about your development as a hockey player and why didn't you follow your father's footsteps and um, why didn't you decide to build a career in a speedway? Uh, well, what, what was the first question? Uh, that's the first question. <laughs> so uh, okay. tell, us, tell us about your development maybe as a hockey player and why didn't you follow your father's uh, footsteps? Well, actually, I was planning to do that, but uh, when I was 13, 14 years old, and I was I was riding motocross in the summer and playing hockey in winter. So, for some reason, I decided I decided that the team sport is it's much better for me, and also I didn't have time for both of them. So I don't know. It was just easy to make the choice and just play hockey. And I think I think it was even more professional when I was young, but because when when I was riding motocross, it, it was a little bit like hobby, but uh, hockey was always it meant much more to me. So uh, you you liked hockey better, yes? I I could say yes. Yeah, uh, th that's really interesting. So uh, the next question: What do people in Finland know about Ukrainian hockey? I think not much. They just know that they they play hockey in Ukraine. But to be honest, before I I came to Ukraine, I didn't know anything. I I just knew Donbas and that that's all. And I think I couldn't even name any Ukrainian hockey players before. And yeah, the knowledge of Ukrainian hockey it's 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 really on low level. So people don't know anything about Ukrainian hockey, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so why didn't you want to develop your uh, hockey career in Finland? Uh, it, it's a good question. I I think I I wanted to try something else and I just didn't want to play in Finland. And when I moved to Poland for the first time and I really enjoyed my time there, so I decided that, okay, it's, it's, it's like a challenge to me that I can live in other countries and see different kind of lifestyles and also cultures. And yeah, I, I, I'm pretty happy that I made that decision. So uh, you wanted to obtain another culture experience, yes? Yeah, I get it, yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that's really interesting. Uh, so before joining the Ukrainian Championship, you played in the Polish League and the Beneliga in the United Champion of Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, how did you like your games for these teams in general? And why didn't you stay there longer? Uh, what can I say? Uh, my time in Poland was really nice. We had good team and we did well. We were in uh, Puchar Polski final. Unfortunately, we lost that game, but uh, still, we I, I knew that it could be good games in the playoffs and we could have a chance to win the champion in, in Poland, but uh, I'm, I'm in championships and uh, I don't know what happened. We had some problems with, with the club and I decided that it's better to go somewhere else. And, and I was on the tryout, uh, but I just couldn't make it. And... Uh, yeah, to be honest, I wasn't good enough back in the days. So I had to find something else and then I got the offer from, from Netherlands and yeah, I didn't have anything else on the table. So I, I went there. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's fair to say that it was a wrong decision for, for my career that I played in, in Netherlands because the level wasn't so good and it wasn't professional at all. Uh, and I think I was really lucky that I got the chance to play in Ukraine after, after that season. And yeah, I'm really happy for that, that I, I came to Ukraine. Uh, so you said you uh, you lost your game in Poland. And uh, can you say us about the reasons why, you, why your team lost? Maybe you have, maybe the team has, uh, the team had uh, some problems uh, in, in the team, maybe like Rose or something like this. Uh... Yeah, well, well, in Poland, uh, we had a little bit different team. Like, we had some good Polish players, and then we had Finnish imports. 
uh, but the problem was that we had only three lines and when we played against uh, Tihi in in semifinals they had five or six lines and uh, I think it was sixth game we played like 125 minutes something like that and then we lost the game and we had the chance to make the semifinal uh the final in that game but we we lost the chance and then we had the game seven in Tihi and our players were too tired to play well. And I, I think that that was the biggest reason why why we didn't make the final. But overall, I, I think we didn't have the most expensive team in the Polish league. We had like really decent players, but it, it just wasn't enough. And sometimes it's all about the lucky that we weren't lucky enough. So. Oh, okay. It's really interesting. So from your point of view, is it, uh... What plays more lo- ro- role? Uh, is it plays more role a lucky or maybe the discipline? It's a good question. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what is the right answer here. Uh, of course, you need to be really disciplined, but on the other hand, you always need to deserve the luck. Uh, but sometimes when it's not going like you want, it's it's really hard hard to get it back to the track. So I don't really know. I think I wouldn't be here if if I if I know the know the answer. Uh, okay. Um, well, I think that's it. Maybe need to be in harmony. They like it, like and uh, and discipline. Yeah, yeah uh, that's true. Uh, so the next question: How did the Krajanyev of game management come across to you? What were your expectation of the transition to Ukrainian hockey and the country as a whole? What what did you like the most in Ukraine? Mm, the first question: How how I got the, uh, contact from from Volki? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, how yeah. how their management come across to you? Uh, yeah, I actually remember that morning, or it was actually day. I came back from the gym in the morning, and I I was going to take a nap, and I woke up maybe 45 minutes later, and I just saw my my message from my agent that I I opened the message and I read maybe a couple of first sentence, and there was that would you like to go to Ukraine that we have offer from from Chris Anivovki. And to be honest, I didn't even read till the end. I answered, yes, I want to go there. And then I was, then I started to read what they, they're going to offer to me. And uh, like, I didn't, I didn't know anything. I just wanted to go to Ukraine. And my expectations were like, well, Donbass is really good team and they have played well in, in Continental Cup. And so I think the league should be pretty decent, but I didn't know anything and I, I, I don't know if I had any expectation. I just know that that for sure they are practicing hard, and that was the most important thing to me. Oh yeah, it's really interesting. Um, before you went to Ukraine, what did you know about Ukraine? Not much. I just I just knew that that uh, Russia was attacking to to Ukraine 2014, and there was big problems with that. Uh, yeah, of course, my mother's first question was that is it safe to go to Ukraine? And my father's first question about Ukraine was about the level. And I I didn't know what is the right answer. And I, yeah, I didn't know anything, but I was ready to take the, take the opportunity. Uh, okay. Um, by the way, uh, what, uh, what does uh, people in, what do people in Finland know about uh... Uh, Ukraine and maybe what their attitude to Ukraine and to Russian uh, war since 2014. Yeah, I think everyone is following what's happening there and they are they are uh, watching news about Ukraine and reading news. Uh, yeah, of course we support Ukraine like most of us, maybe 97, 98 uh, percent. Well, I I think it. I remember when it happened 2014, but I was too young to understand what what was going on there. And uh, yeah, it was something what happened somewhere far away. And I I remember that we didn't even talk about that in, in my family. But now, is it then? Oh, well, 15 months ago when it happened in February, 
last last year i i think everyone woke up and and saw what's happening in russia and what they're doing and yeah we the most important thing is that i think all of us we support ukraine yeah um just just thank thank you for that um so Good last uh, <laughs> oh you know you know ukrainian awards uh, a couple yeah okay it will be one question from the list okay uh so the next the next question uh, how did you manage to settle in another team and um, did you have any language barriers or other dif- difficult difficulties uh, between the team players yeah well i think we had only three or four guys who were able to speak english so of course we we had some problems but i think it was funny since the day one and yeah it, it was it was so funny the first couple of weeks uh I didn't really talk talk a lot in the locker room because no one no one didn't understand anything what I was saying. But then like step by step I was able to understand a little bit Russian because Russian was the coaching language and it, it was the language in the locker room. So yeah, it was really baby steps what I was taking to learn Russian and uh, yeah, to be honest I I never never got that language but at least i was able to understand something but yeah it, it was it was it was good time and i really liked that of course the language barrier made it a little bit harder because when i played with my d partner from from russia he didn't speak english at all so of of course if you try to make some plans with him it, it was let's say impossible but yeah. somehow somehow we managed to play well i don't know how we did it but Yeah, uh, how you can assess uh, your um, your first time in Ukraine? Uh, I came to to Borispil, that that airport near to Kiev, and uh, I didn't know who who's coming to pick me up from the airport. And then I was with my hockey stuff outside there and waiting that someone comes to me and. Then I saw that three guys are coming to me and I, I said that hell hello, hello, how are you doing? And they answered, no English. <laughs> um, so I just followed them to the car and they were driving me to Provari. And we were using Google Translator uh, that where I can eat and where I need to be, what time. And actually that was that was funny that I was told that my it was tryout. I came to tryout. And I was told that I I will get two games against Billy Bars, and I think it was Thursday evening when I came to Ukraine. And uh, yeah, before they dropped me off, they told me that you are going to practice tomorrow with juniors. And I was thinking that why I'm going to practice because I should have a game. They told me no, you will play on Saturday. So my tryout was only one game. So I I went to the junior practice and no one no one spoke English. And I was I I tried to ask some questions that okay where should I go where should I eat, I don't remember how I got that that information but someone translated to me that okay, that's the address where you can eat and and here is your uh, accommodation and tomorrow morning nine o'clock at the ring and we play against the Bars and I I remember that we won maybe five six something like that. Yeah, I think that that was a good motivation for people uh, in your team to learn English. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know how many of them were motivated to do that, but at least my my defense partner started to speak a little bit English in in the end of the season, or actually before I left. Yeah. Uh, okay. The next question: You played ten matches for Vovkia and moved to the future Lithuanian champions Kaunas. Uh, why did the mm-hmm. club take this step and let you go? Uh, the problem was was that I didn't get my my salaries. It was like two months late, and I I texted my agent that we need to find something else because I I didn't know if this team was going to finish the season and everyone was worried that what's going to happen next and uh, our coach got fired and yeah it was really difficult time and actually i got offer from uh, kramatorsk and and uh, nepro herson and i decided that i think it's better to go to kramatorsk because i i thought that it would be better team for for myself 
So I was one week in in uh, Kramatorsk until we figured out that I didn't have any papers, I didn't have a visa, I didn't have work permit, I didn't have anything. I, I thought that everything was done by the club, but they didn't do anything. Of maybe maybe it was my my job, but I I was never told what I should do for that. So I I came back to keep from Kramatorsk and I had to leave the country and I I went back to Finland and I was maybe one month in Finland and I got offer from Kaunas and I thought that, okay I must go there I didn't have any any other chances and uh, yeah I was told that it's a good team in in Lithuania and probably we could play in the finals and I had never won anything so I thought it's a good chance to win something and yeah we did it. Oh um, yeah. <clears throat> It's a really interesting story, but uh, I want to be sure that I understand understood correct. Krasnyi, uh, Vovke, uh, they didn't pay you your salary, yes? Yeah, that's true. I think they didn't pay anyone. I think there was some problems with the sponsor. Uh, and uh, uh, what the the head of the of the team said uh, to you? What 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 was the reason? Uh, I don't I don't remember anymore. I was having some conversations with with the president of the team and actually I'm 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 still in touch with him. I have I have nothing against him. He he's a good guy. But uh, it was really difficult time for him as well because if if the sponsor promised to pay you and you don't get that money what what can you do? And maybe I just didn't understand that maybe that it's not his fault that we didn't get money. So of course, I was blaming blaming him. Uh, but in the end of the day, if, if you don't get salaries, uh, but you need to buy some food, so what can you do? I I I still think that it was a good de- good decision to leave leave the team. And but still, yeah, it, it's it's never easy to leave the team, and especially if if you don't have any other team where you can go. So so yeah, that's all. Uh, so uh, the management replaced their uh, responsibilities, yeah. Uh, kind of, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, how do you assess your career in uh, Grzanievovki and the level of the Ukrainian Championship in general? Uh, I would say that we had we had a solid team. We had first. First and second line, it, it was good. We had good players and especially good war forwards. But for some reason, we didn't start the season like we wanted to do that. I think we lost five or six games in a row. It was it was really difficult time for us. Uh, about about the Ukrainian league, um, I, I could say that it was much better than the Bena league. But it was a little bit lower, lower than uh, that Polish Polish league. Uh, may, there is a big difference to Finnish hockey or Polish hockey because it was a li- little bit more like uh, offensive hockey. It's and it's like it, I felt like it was individual sport. That it's it's like me myself and I. That I just wanted to make points. Everyone was like individuals in the team, and that that was the biggest biggest difference to Poland or to Finland. Uh, so uh, the the Ukrainian hockey was uh, on the lower level than uh, Polish hockey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, so um, can you maybe um, uh, tell us about Polish uh, hockey players and Ukrainian who 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 is playing uh, more hard and raw? Uh, can can you repeat the question one more time? What what was the the first question? What you said? Uh, can you uh, tell us about Polish hockey players and Ukrainian hockey players? Who is playing more offensive and uh, who is playing more rough? Like, I I think I think Polish players are more rough and it's it's more defensive. Ukrainian players are more offensive and they are maybe a little bit more skillful. And uh, and actually, I I mean like uh, the Ukrainian league because there was like players from many many countries. So for me, it was really hard to recognize who's from Russia, who's from Ukraine, who's from Belarus. Like I, for me, it was just opponents. 
for myself and when i played against them i didn't think about the passport but i i saw that they're really skillful players they had played in khl in in good leagues and it was you never knew what's going to happen next but in poland it's a little bit more organized hockey they are not that skillful but they are maybe the physical condition is a little bit better and i could say it's also faster hockey that that's the biggest difference of course there are always individuals but i think i i think that's like how i think so uh the phys- the physical condition of ukrainian players are lower than polish players yeah mm, let's say different different yeah uh yeah like ukrainian players are fast and they're in good condition but uh polish players are are more strong yeah, and uh, what can you tell us about any events of, uh, of the sportsmen? Sorry, can you repeat, please? Uh, can you tell us about any events of the sportsmen from, like, in Ukraine and in Polish, or maybe in Benelli? League? Uh, well, Benelli, League, it was, it was totally a pure league, because we had only three practice per week. And after the games, players were drinking beer, and it, it was more like hobby hockey uh but it's really hard to set any difference between between ukraine and poland in this topic i think it was it was similar yeah, um okay that, that's your point of view is really interesting and so the next question uh after your year of absence from ukraine hockey the championship split and two championships were formed uh one of which was your future sport club sokil and after mm-hmm. the championship season and a successful season in a Latvian club, uh, why did you decide to accept the application from this club? From from Sokil? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was I was in touch with the president of Volki, who like who was in president of Volki back in days, and he was a manager of Sokil, and I I texted him and I. I said that I'm I'm looking for a new team and uh, I knew him and I I knew that he could I say that he respect me as as a as a hockey player but I think also as a, as a human being and yeah I, I told him that I'm I'm looking for a new team and I would like to come back to Ukraine and I don't actually remember how long it took but maybe maybe even one month and they told me that okay I'll come here and. Yeah, it was it wasn't a pay rise when I came from Latvia. Actually, my salary was a little bit lower in Ukraine, but I just want to play in Ukraine that much. Oh yeah, okay. Um, were you worried that you and all other players might have hockey problems, if we can say it like that, in the future after joining uh, uh, sport club Sokil and the Super League in general, that uh, these championships would not held under the auspice of the federation? uh well back in days i i didn't even think about it i i just wanted to be in ukraine and play like play on the good level uh yeah now nowadays it's it's easier to say that it's it's not a good thing that there was two leagues in in ukraine but i don't know that much about about the conflict what was between between the leagues and i don't know if if i if i need to say anything about that i i all what i said when i was in ukraine that i hope that there will be only one league next season that there would be more good teams and i think it's also good for for ukrainian hockey and also for federation that they have all the best players available for the national team uh yeah and uh, how do you evaluate your second platoon to ukraine tell us maybe about this club what uh, are the club's goals Mm, well, when I came to came to Sokil, uh, I just saw that it's a good team, like on the paper. And since the first practice, I saw that that we want to play a little bit different hockey. And I knew that, of course, I had uh, the champion bonus on my contract, so I thought that it's like it's like the main goal that we want to win. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> what, what uh, how do you evaluate your second return to Ukraine? Maybe do you want to come back to Ukraine or or no? 
Yeah, yeah, I really do. Uh, it, it was it was still even if it was super league, it was really good time and uh before the war started like or let's say the big scale war started i i thought that i i would like to stay in ukraine for the next season and now i'm just waiting that russia will be will be destroyed and i can come back to ukraine so ukraine always wait for you yeah yeah that's true uh so the next question i think it's really interesting how how did the war start for you and did you have any promotions about it uh well how it started to me uh let's say when when i was still in ukraine it was maybe 10 days before the war and uh, i got a call from uh, finnish embassy and they asked me to leave immediately and i i didn't know what to do and i was calling with my dad and i was i was like we were just discussing that what i should do next and yeah we decided that okay it's better to go to poland and i asked as the coach and team manager if i can go to poland and practice in novitark and when it's calm I, i could come back and well actually it was maybe one day before the war i already booked tickets back to ukraine for next saturday let's say it was wednesday wednesday morning when i was booking the tickets for saturday and thursday morning it it all started and of course it was a difficult time but i was i was mostly like wondering how my teammates are are doing in in truskivka and yeah my my thoughts were with them but also with all the ukrainian peoples it, it was a difficult time for me and and for them as well of course uh, so uh what was your First, uh, owed you to this information when uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, the Finnish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, called you, and what was your the first attitude? Maybe you think that's no, that's that's not true, or they are crazy, or you think that's that's true, and I need went out from Ukraine. Mm, yeah, of course, my relatives were asking me to leave earlier, maybe maybe one month or two, no, I mean two weeks or one week before before that before i got the call but i i thought that okay I, i'm not leaving anywhere anywhere because i i didn't see any difference and i didn't believe that that the attack is coming so but when when i got the call from embassy i thought that okay they're working for me and they're thinking my best i i thought okay maybe maybe it's time to go that they they don't waste their time to call people like without any reasons uh, so uh what did you feel when you leave ukraine maybe you feel a soreness to ukraine or maybe i don't know <laughs> to be honest i didn't because i i didn't even understand the reason why i was leaving because i didn't see any difference to normal and i i thought that the war is not coming like of course there was there was all the time war in in, in donbas and crimea was occupied by russians but still like the big scale i i didn't see that coming and i thought that, okay i will go to go to poland for one week or max two weeks and i will come back and we will play in playoffs and this is what i thought yeah that that's really interesting it's because nobody believed in that yeah yeah me neither at time uh so there were 12 Russians and three Belarusians playing for a sport club Sokol. Uh, did they try to help their Ukrainian teammates in uh, any way since the start of a full-scale war? And how did they evacuate from Ukraine? So just the first question, uh, how how they tried to help Ukrainian teammates? Uh, like, what do you mean with this this question? Uh, maybe they sent any any money or uh, mm, they try to help like I don't know send uh, a food or clothes or offer their their help I I don't actually I don't know anything about that like how how it was um, oh. yeah I, I don't even remember like I think I was living in the fog like first first couple of weeks and i don't i don't remember anymore what happened and 
So uh, you you didn't understand what's what's going on. Yeah, something like that. And I also remember that I didn't sleep for three first nights when the big scale war started. So it was it was it was something what I don't remember what happened on these days. Yeah. Uh, okay. And maybe do you know how how they evacuated from Ukraine? To be honest, I have no idea oh, okay. because I, I was still in touch with them. Like I was in in the group chat of Sokil, but they were just thinking what they should do next. But I don't know how they left, and I never asked. I I wasn't that close with with any of them. I was just not, uh, in touch with with Ukrainian players and asking how they are doing and where they can go and and also if. If, if they need some help so I, I could help them from Poland. Hello dear subscribers and viewers of the YouTube channel Hawkman. Friends, I'm asking for your help. Now on my Instagram page I'm collecting funds for two DJI Mavic 3 Flymore combo drones for the 100 second Territorial Defense Brigade. These drones will go to Zaporizhia, to my close friends. Now is a crucial time for our country. Let's bring our victory closer together slava ukraine okay okay that's that's good um uh, how is your career going now at uh, levis in slovakia and where alexi verona is your teammate uh well of course it was a big disappointment when we didn't make the playoffs this season because that's that's why i went to slovakia because they they were fighting for for the last playoff spot and i i think we played well and we had good teams uh, good good players in the team and we got three more players from from port Halle to levice and uh, and yeah let let's say uh i i was i was pretty sure that we are going to make the playoffs and even if we we won the last game uh i i couldn't believe that we didn't we didn't make the so after the season I, I thought okay I think I could come back to Slovakia but also I'm, I'm wondering what I should do next and where I should where I should play so I don't have any contracts yet I'm still still thinking where I should where I want to go and also I'm, I'm I'm like waiting for for offers and um, what was your second question uh the first question um, about uh, how is your career going now at uh, Lewis in Slovakia? And where is this Alexei Verona, um, your teammate now? Where where he is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think he's in Slovakia. I haven't been in touch with him, but I saw that he he scored a lot of points in in uh, in the Ukrainian national team, and he was playing well. And I was texting with my ex teammate about him that that he's like not dominating in the in the national team and probably he should play in NHL. So I hope he is in NHL, but I I think he's not. Oh uh, yeah, okay. he's a good, he's a really good guy. And actually, if I if I can say anything about about Oleksi, that he's a really good guy, but his dog is even better. So um, they have so, so lovely dog, and you know, this is all what I want to say about him. Yeah, um, I have one interesting question. Uh, when can we expect that you in Ukraine? Hmm? Uh, when can we expect that you in Ukraine? Sorry, I still didn't hear what you said. Uh, can you hear us now? Yes, now it's a little bit better. Uh, can, uh, when can we expect that you in Ukraine? In, in Ukrainian? Yeah, 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 in Ukraine. Like You mean like what I can say or... Uh, no, uh, when can we expect that you to come in Ukraine? Sorry, I... Wait, I need to do something for the internet because I lost the connection. Okay, uh, can you hear now? All, all what I heard was, was Ukraine. Uh, uh, when can we expect you in Ukraine? Okay, okay, uh, now I can hear you. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to Ukraine in in three weeks uh during the next three weeks yeah 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 in, in three weeks i think it will be 28th of of may i will be flying to poland and i'm traveling to ukraine uh so and, uh, 
Can you tell us what surprised you most uh, about Ukraine and what you like most about living and working in Ukraine? Maybe you liked people or cuisine? Mm, I think I was surprised by, by Ukraine people that they were so so kind. They were always ready to help me. And even if we didn't have a common language, it, it was it was like it was nice to be with them and even try to communicate something. And yeah, I like the food. It's 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 a little bit similar than in Poland, but I, I really enjoyed every meal in, in Ukraine. Uh, also, before I uh, like the first time in Ukraine when I played in in Volki, I uh, I didn't expect how much we are practicing there and like how hard it's going to be. And yeah, I was I was really surprised that we are practicing that much. But also, it was a really good experience that I I know that I can make it even if it's it's tough. And uh, what else? Well, we played many games in Kramatorsk, Truskivka, Mariupol, Herson, like really far away from Kiev. So I didn't know how I managed to sleep that much in the bus. And this is something what what I'm actually missing that that it was like like six, seven o'clock in the morning and we come back to Kiev and that everyone is so tired but still we are going to practice. And you're so tired after practice that you really you cannot even make home. Um, I'm like it. It sounds crazy, but I'm missing that feeling when you're so tired. Uh, like physically, and I think also mentally. So um, it's it's a good experience. Yeah. Yeah, I I will remember that rest of my life. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, in a personal conversation with uh, Hawkman, Alexey Vorona said that uh, you like playing in Ukraine and uh, you like living in Ukraine. Was Alexey Vorona telling the truth, or would you like to add something to this? He said that I like to live in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, I, this is this is this is not true at all. I I love to live in Ukraine. <laughs> that that's good. Uh, so now we we are waiting for you in Ukraine, and uh, can you maybe tell us two funny stories uh, from your hockey career in Ukraine? Uh, well, there are many. Mm. Well, I I remember my first game. It it was supposed to be in, in Truskivka against uh, Donbas, and we had so long preseason because because of covid and and everything and we were practicing two months before the first game and like 10 11 12 times per week and it was so tough and then finally it was time time for the first game like of, of the regular season and we were traveling maybe 10 hours to truskivka and we had we had practiced there and and it was game day morning and I was told that you are not going to play today because we didn't we didn't make the international transfer card. And I couldn't believe that, that that's true because because I had been two months in Ukraine and I didn't understand how they didn't do that. And yeah, I was I was watching the game from the stands and <laughs> I was thinking that 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 it, it it will be always like that or it's it's going to be something different and yeah. But then we had second game in Mariupol and I, I played there, so everything was fine. <laughs> Did you remember your first feelings when you heard that? I I thought that they're they're joking. <laughs> and um, maybe you feel sore sore for for that, or <laughs> I don't know. No, I didn't. I didn't feel sorry at all. I was so so frustrated that. That I'm, I have been practicing two months so hard, and I cannot play in the first game. And yeah, now I'm, I'm laughing, but but I remember when I was in Truskivka, it, it wasn't funny at all. Uh, didn't you didn't you feel the anger in that time? I I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, what should be done in Ukrainian hockey to reach the Finnish level of hockey? Because we. You tell you told us about the, the differences between the Polish hockey and the Ukrainian hockey, but can you tell us uh, what should be done in Ukrainian hockey to reach the Finnish level? Mm, I I think the first step is not to reach Finnish level, 
I think they should do something for junior co coaching because that's that's the beginning that you need to have good juniors and then you can have good adult players. <sighs> I'm I'm totally wrong person to answer to this question. I they need more ice rings, they need more practice and and probably more professional coaches for for the kids. Mm, I I think many things, but first. First, uh, Ukraine must win the war. I think that's the first step. So we are hoping that it will be in in this year. If it, um, yeah, so I, and I think I also think that it's much more important than hockey. That that yeah yeah. Now now it's the main problem with 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 the Russians, and the next we will yeah. win hockey maybe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so have you mastered some Ukraine? If yes, can you can you demonstrate? <laughs> well, I know only some words like uh, Dyakuyu, Putlaska, uh, well, uh, Ukraina Peremose. I I think that's that's pretty much all I I can say. Dobre. Dobre. <laughs> that's all words, or maybe you know some. Can you make make up a sentence? uh that's that's so so hard let's say i i cannot cannot say anything more now but i promise that i i will learn to say something and i, I learned a little bit ukrainian yeah okay and actually I, i started to learn ukrainian songs so so uh yeah uh, let's say let's say i'm i'm already doing this step okay. by step Do you like Ukrainian songs? I love them, even if I don't understand anything. So, uh, what was your the favorite? Uh, well, I need to check, check it. What is the name? C can you turn on it for us? Maybe just for su subscribers. Why? Well, uh, yes. Well, uh, can you hear it? Uh, no. Maybe try to turn on it. I don't know where's my microphone. Yeah, we can hear. You know this song? Yeah, yeah. It's Ukraina Peremose. Yeah. Do you know Ukrainian song Uruguzi Shervona Kalina? Yes, yes, I, I know that. And actually, it's also a nice song. Uh, it, it may it became popular in uh, in the spring of 2022 when the okay. when the Ukrainian uh, Uh, singer Andriy Hlemnyuk uh, saw it on the, the the empty street. And yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so yeah, I think I think I have seen that. Uh, I can I can turn on it if you want. Oh, of course. Okay, one minute. I'm waiting. Yeah, I, I know. So uh, the first video was he was singing that I'm on the street and the street was empty and if I'm not mistaken that that was the first two weeks of uh, full scale war and after that uh, that man I I don't know who is he who is it and he he made a remix and it it became very popular. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I ha I have been listening to that version a couple times, and yeah, I know I know it's a big song in Ukraine. Uh, yeah, so that's probably the old question we are 
We're so grateful to you. And uh, it was a project of Hawkman and Yetu Moxon and everything will be rain and foggy. So Yetu, what would you like to say in the end? Ukraine must win. Yeah. Slava Ukraina. Heroem Slava. Thank you. Diakuil. See you at the next projects. We are waiting See for you in Ukraine. See you. See you there. Okay. Take Goodbye. Care.